Well, who would have thought it? Retro Core is back! Well, not special, mind you, but it's back. And kicking off this new episode is Street Fighter Alpha 2 for the Super Famicom. Yeah, this ain't the Sega Saturn or even the PlayStation version. Nope, this is the Super Nintendo. The way it pauses there when it says Alpha, you, you just know it's meant to say Street Fighter Zero Two. Now considering right by the time this game came out, most uh, real Street Fighter fans were playing on the uh, Sega Saturn version. Which was uh, the next best thing to the arcade back then. And it just makes you wonder why Capcom bothered making this for the uh, Super Nintendo. Well, maybe Capcom are just loyal to the fans. After all, they kept making Saturn games after everyone else decided not to bother, including Sega themselves. So why disappoint the fans that made your game as popular as, as it was? The Super Nintendo owners. Because you got to admit, if it wasn't for the Super Nintendo Street Fighter, maybe it was the best version, maybe, maybe it wasn't. But you got to admit, if it wasn't for that version of the game, it never would have got the popularity that it did. And you got to take your hats off to Capcom because they've done actually a very good effort of um, porting uh, the Street Fighter Alpha 2 to the uh, Super Famicom. Okay, the colours are lacking and the animation's lacking and everything looks a bit smaller, but um, just look at it. You can tell what it's meant to be, even if it does load in every now and then. And the attention to detail is in there. You can see the water ripples on the floor on this stage. Of course, there are things missing, but you know, not bad for what for what it's running on. Even the game's missing quite a few bits here and there, it does actually play quite well, so you know it is a faithful reproduction of the original game. Apart from these load in between um, attempts to fight. The thing is though, would you bother buying it? Well, apart from collection purposes or maybe a nostalgic view, I can't see any reason why you'd want to buy this version, even though it is pretty decent. You can get yourself the Sega Saturn version, which is a million times better and a million times cheaper as well. But still, it's a nice technical achievement, you got to admit. Just love the Bitmap Brothers rip off her logo there. This is a Super Star Shooter. A lovely dodging game made for the uh, Wii's homebrew channel. Even though it does say WiiWare at the beginning, but um, it's not WiiWare, it's for the homebrew channel. Of course, this is only a sample version, but um, I can say hand and heart, this is definitely the best homebrew channel shooter there is. Most of the other stuff is just like, well, shit, to be honest. But uh, this is actually like a real game. And just listen to that lovely music. Great, isn't it? Retro in... Retro all the way. Mm. 
So in this demo you got a 2 minute game, a 5 minute game and you can uh, replay your actual uh, game which you just what, which you just did. Uh, hopefully um, when the game is finally released you're going to be able to uh, get a lot more in there. I'll just shut up now and then let you sit back and enjoy this lovely bit of homebrew coding. Definitely worthy of an official release. I'd pay for it. There's my game which I just played. Speed it up an awful lot. Bloody mad that is. No, this isn't the 32X game with a new fancy title screen. This is actually the Sega Saturn version of Stellar Assault. And it's one of those Sega Saturn games that'll cost you an awful lot. It came out in 19, uh, 1998. And basically what we get is a solid, well, it seems solid, 60 frames a second space shooter. It's some of the most fluent 3D you've seen on a Sega Saturn. And it comes from Sims. They're exactly well known for the making 3D games. But they've done a fantastic job in porting the Sega original 32X game to the Sega Saturn. In fact, did I say it, they've probably done a better job than what Sega would have done themselves. With controls fully analogue, or you can have them in digital form. you got a control method that will suit even the most picky of people. I suppose the controls being extremely fluid, but also very easy to pick up. In fact, even a novice can be uh, pretty good at this game in a matter of no time. Mind you, there are those people who don't like the reverse controls, but you'll be happy to know you can put them back to normal. Unfortunately, the stories are all in Japanese, and there is an awful lot of stories in there. Um, and to be honest, I can imagine you're going to miss out on a bit of the excitement if you can't understand what the story's talking about. But um, and again, if you're just into a blasting the shit up everything, you're going to be quite amused with this. But as you can see, it looks absolutely beautiful and sounds pretty good as well. Stellar Assault is also quite a challenge, so you're certainly not going to finish it on your first sitting. It's going to take quite a while before you finish this one. I thought you don't put it on easier, that is.
just like the 32x version of this game, you also get um, what's called a trace mode, where you can watch a replay of your fight from a, a third person viewpoint, which is actually quite interesting. Beautiful cutscene that one, isn't it? Now you may notice that the game is presented in a little box. Uh, that's because the game is actually full widescreen. Of course, if you play on a normal TV, you're going to get the big black bars on the top and bottom. If you play on a widescreen TV, it's going to look really good. And also, it does have a, an interlaced mode or a normal mode in the option screen. For some reason the interlace makes it look a little bit sharper. But no matter what mode you pick, you're going to be impressed by the visuals, put it that way. Now if someone said to you that you were going to get a Sega Saturn fighting game which ran 60 frames a second with full on light sourcing and shading, you'd laugh at them wouldn't you? Well you can't anymore because that's what Sabaki gives you. True it's no uh, virtual fighter, but um, from a technical viewpoint it's uh, quite impressive. Just look how big the characters are. the arena which doesn't break up like Sega's AM2 games. Lovely light sourcing and fully shaded. But then again the game doesn't play that well. Well that's been a little bit hotter isn't it? Don't have plants look so metallic. Oh, I was getting my ass kicked there, wasn't I? See, the problem with Savaki is um, the controls just don't feel tight enough. It just feels a little bit on the sluggish side, and while the movement and the animation is really nice, it doesn't seem to correspond as you'd expect it to with the button presses. But you know, after a bit of playing, you do get used to uh, the way it controls and it does become a fairly decent martial arts game. I certainly got a lot of variety in there as well. So if you're, if you're after the 3D fighter with a little bit of variety, give Sabaki a try. You might be surprised. Now it's very unusual for the Mega CD game to get the best version of a game, but in uh, Pop and Mail's case, it actually is best on the Mega CD. Quite surprised that. Also available on the PC Engine uh, and the Super Famicom and a few other systems as well. But none of them compared to this Mega CD version. Now, Puffle Mail, for those who don't know, is a walk along uh, platformer with odd RPG elements. And of course, being a CD based game, or well, this version is, you get full on speech as well. Very nice. As you can see in this case, I've switched the speech off. But I'll switch it back on in a minute. the system put the voice back to on See, the only problem is, is when you put the voices on you can't actually skip any of the text 
which comes quite annoying when um, you die and you've got to recontinue and uh, go back through the entire sp the uh, speech again. Well, apart from that one niggling point, um, I can't find much to fault a Poffle Mail. As with all games of this type, you start off with a uh, pretty low energy and the more you kill, the more uh, experience points you get and the more money you gain. Which you can use to go and buy items, weapons and so on in various shops. Gameplay wise, there's nothing special, it's uh, pretty much what you'd expect. But um, the challenge is nice and the actual uh, visual appeal of the game is also quite good. Some of the areas are quite well laid out, um, some are actually pretty interesting as well. In fact, I don't think there is actually a dull moment in the game. I'm sure there is, mind you, but um, I didn't find any to be too dull. Except when I kept dying at one point and having to do it a million times. That was quite annoying. See him at the very beginning of this game when I made this video, and I've actually got a bugger all of my options. Here you go, here's one of the bosses. Some of the bosses can be a bit of a pain, but once you learn uh, the pattern of their attacks, they're actually quite easy to uh, finish off. Well, I say quite easy, I mean, it can be done with a bit of timing. Which doesn't seem to be the case in uh, this situation. Use one of my items there. Where's that little bugger gone? There he is. It's me dead. Oh, you can see your pants. Should keep the perverts happy. Now there are hundreds of puzzle games out there, most of them just being Tetris ripoffs or column copies. But Namco have gone um, all original with Mega Panel for the Mega Drive. And believe me, this is one very simple, basic looking uh, puzzle game, but extremely addictive. So on the uh, left hand side of the screen, you got. Um, a set of blocks and what you got to do is match three of them in a row either uh, horizontally or vertically. And once you uh, do match three of the same colour up, a little bomb will drop down to uh, remove one of the blocks on the right hand side which will uh, reveal a picture which is hidden behind it. Let's see, got one more block to go there, there you go. And the picture's revealed. Of course each round gets more and more tougher, as you can see uh, the yellow blocks on the right hand side are actually quite tall now. On the left hand side, when you uh, can do a few uh, chains, so you get a, a couple of uh, different colored blocks uh, disappearing at once, you do actually get to uh, drop down an awful lot of bombs on the right hand side. Which you can sort of follow what I'm trying to say. So the chain reaction is very useful. Like I said, the game is extremely basic, but it's so addictive. Now, if you've never tried Mega Panel, I seriously do recommend you try it out. You won't be disappointed. Like when this was first introduced to me uh, years and years and years ago, you know, when the Mega Drive was still in, uh, you know, it, it was the in console at the time. You know, well, as I was saying, when it was first introduced to me, I was thinking, oh, hell, what the fuck's this? I don't want to play this. But I sat down, gave the game a go, and bloody hell, hours just flew by. And they still do even now. 
Hey, a bit of titty action go- Oh no, she's washing a pussy! <laughs> no, not that type of pussy. Pussy cat. You dirty fuckers. So as well as the pin-up modes which you've seen there, we've also got the lesson mode. I'm not exactly sure why it's called the lesson mode. Apparently it does teach you uh, what to do, but um, you can sort of figure that out for yourself really, couldn't you? And of course there is the two-player mode in there as well. This is the Sega Dreamcast version, the original version that is. And just look how many bloody characters you get to choose from. Of course you don't get that many characters when you start the game. You actually got to, you got to win certain rounds, do certain online uh, events or whatever. But just look at the choice, look at that, you got Jill Valentine there from uh, Biohazard. Lovely, and in fact, some of the some of the extra characters are just as good as the uh, standard characters. As with the uh, Jill Valentine, you can uh, throw out zombies and uh, uh, what they call the mutant hound dogs and uh, even crows. Great stuff. Now this game uh, recently came out on Xbox Live uh, for the uh, Xbox 360, uh, redone in HD. Not seen it myself. But um, I wonder if that clock is in real time, because on the Sega Dreamcast version, it's real time. So um, you can actually see what time I made this video. Yeah, that's right. Just after half twelve at night. The dude's getting the crap kicked out of him there by uh, Mega Man. Or Rock Man, whichever you like. Now you may or may not know that um, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 uh, was one of the best online versus games for the uh, Sega Dreamcast. Now I myself had a, a broadband adapter but I'm sure everyone I was playing didn't have a broadband adapter. And the game worked so beautifully online. Very very rarely was there any lag. Oh it's a zombie. And I don't even need to talk about the gameplay, because as you expect from a Capcom uh, vs game, the gameplay is extremely well. And even though a lot of the characters do seem unbalanced, it doesn't seem to be the case when you're playing. The game is extremely balanced, of course it's not perfect, but um, for such a variety of characters, especially <laughs> characters such as uh, Rockman vs, uh, I don't know, Juggernaut or whatever, it does work out quite well. Even in the day of uh, new versus games such as uh, Tatsunoko vs Capcom, this uh, Marvel vs Capcom 2 still cuts it. It's still very good and entertaining to play. As I'm sure a lot of uh, Xbox 360 owners are finding out. 
if you don't want an Xbox or you feel like getting the original game, go and buy yourself the Naomi Arcade or the Streamcast conversion. So I'm telling you now, you won't be disappointed. One of the best 2D fighters for the system. Unfortunately, the online mode no longer exists. You wanna rematch? Don't give up. Challenge again. Mega Drive owners might recognize this one. This is Marvel Land. Or oh, Talisman's Adventure, I think it was called in the West. Of course, this isn't the Mega Drive version, this is the original arcade version. But how does it differ from the Mega Drive conversion, which, to be honest, was very good. Oh, oh, hang on, that bit's not in the Mega Drive, is it? Bit of sprite scale in there. Music seems pretty much the same, but uh, one thing you will notice about this arcade version is everything looks a little bit bigger. Mind you, it doesn't look that much bigger on this video, but uh, it did when I was playing it. Also, uh, in the arcade version of Marvel Land, there's an awful lot of extra characters which just do not feature in the Mega Drive version. But if that was due to memory restraints, I don't know, but uh, there's an awful lot missing out of it. Also, level uh, layout's a little bit different as well. So as you can see, Marvel Land is uh, your basic classic platform action game. And it's so simple yet so good. Basically uh, the idea of the game is just to get from A to B, avoiding all the enemies. Now you can either jump on the enemies uh, in the old classic platform style, or as you can see there I've got um, a variety of uh, ghosts following me. And uh, with them you can uh, jump and spin around the air to uh, attack the uh, oncoming enemies. So you having those little ghost uh, characters following you around certainly comes in handy on these roller coaster sections. As you can see there. Without having them you've got to um, jump and uh, avoid the uh, enemies. Which would be a right pain in the ass on this section. Yeah, a little bit of rotation there. Another thing that plagued the Mega Drive version of this game was terrible slowdown. I really do mean bad slowdown, but uh, there doesn't seem to be any in this arcade version. Now it may sound like I'm slagging the Mega Drive version off, but I'm not. The Mega Drive version was a good game. But it's interesting to see what's different about that and the uh, original arcade. Whoa! You got those spinny attacks coming in handy there. Now one thing that is very interesting about the boss fights on the Marvel Land is the um, variety in them. So you can either play a junkie which is a rock, scissors, paper, stone, or as you can see in this boss, a tug of war game. Bash the crap out of your button time. Yeah, I'm sure developers love to find out ways of uh, destroying our controllers. And your fingers come to mention it. After completing the stage, you get to go to the bonus stage, which looks very, very nice as you can see. Collect as many stars as you can for those bonus points. I 
Now Marvel Land only has four different worlds in it, and each world's split up into four sections, and, uh, that I can remember. So it's not exactly going to last you very long. And get that car in gear and off to the shops we go. Now I've actually been to this shop before on Metro Core, this is Manga Soka we're off to, but um, I think the last time we featured it on Metro Core was uh, about two years ago and it's changed quite a little bit since then, so I thought it'd be nice to show you the place again. On the way to uh, Manga Soka we go past this uh, lovely Neo Geo Arcade, well it was a Neo Geo Arcade, hang on you'll be able to see the sign over here, hey there it is. Sign and all that's still up, but um, unfortunately the place closed down last year, so never did get a chance to film in there for you. It's pretty nice as well. So you can see on the horizon over there a little green sign sticking up on the top of a building. That's where we're heading, that's Manga Soko. And Manga Soko is basically one of those uh, second-hand junk shops. There you go, you can see the uh, sign up there now. And uh, they sell uh, games, DVDs, clothes electronic items, all sorts of junk, but the game section is very impressive. So let's go into the shop. And at first you can see the Wii games there, and then um, a bargain basket full of Game Boy uh, Advance games. Now I must uh, apologize for the uh, quality of this video, it's actually filmed with a Panasonic Lumix uh, digital camera. It's a lot easier to hide than a um, video camera. And there we have uh, our display machine, so you can play on some games there. And just down this uh, section here, this is all PlayStation games, so PlayStation, uh, no PlayStation, no PlayStation 2. Glass cabinets there, inside them we have the expensive stuff, and a lot of it is well overpriced to be honest. Or PlayStation. So you can guess PlayStation and PlayStation 2 uh, take over half the floor space. What you expect. This is a Sega Saturn here. And yeah, some Mega Drive games just on the side. And then uh, around the corner we've got more Sega Saturn as well. And all that Saturn as well. It's actually uh, three shells of Sega Saturn. 
with some Mega CD uh, PC Engine effects. And uh, video games there as well. Oh, a Mega CD is also there. And uh, to the side there, you can see uh, some Neo Geo uh, cartridges. Oh, hang on, that's the sound stuff, isn't it? Bloody hell. Did the stuff with PC Engine stuff. And there's the Dreamcast, just one shelf for poor lonely Dreamcast. Which is a bit sad when you consider PlayStation's got five shelves, Sega Saturn's got three shelves, and poor Dreamcast's got one shelf. Some hardware there, that's um, mostly Sega stuff, you've got some MSX stuff, as there. some uh, MXS stuff there as well, and PC Engine. Nintendo and the other consoles on the inside. That's all DS stuff, as you can tell. Loads of Nintendo DS games in this place. But they're not as impressive to look at as uh, all these lovely box Super Famicom games. Whoop, you can just about see me in the mirror there. More minty box Super Famicom games there. Lovely stuff. Oh, maybe Ultraman's not so lovely though. Well, let's have a, a quick look into the glass case. Famicom being one of the most popular machines in Japan. More popular than Super Famicom, not sure why to be honest. But that's Japanese for you. Dreamcast, mostly uh, girly RPG stuff there, some Neo Geo. More rare, expensive Super Famicom games, a lot of them unboxed. And a lot of them way overpriced. Just look at the bloody price on that sapphire. That's so bad, dude. You fucking mad to pay that. Same down here in the Sega Saturn uh, rare game section. A lot of them are just way too expensive. Now, if you're a uh, type of person who doesn't care about boxes, be very happy to uh, browse this section. This is where all the um, unboxed cartridges for the, the Mega Drive, Super Famicom, Famicom, and uh, even some PC Engine U cards down here. Also find some uh, Mass System games and uh, Game Gear, Neo Geo Pocket, and so on. Some like, guidebooks there. At the very end of this row, you can see some uh, Famicom Disk System games. God knows how many of them still work, mind you. So, um, hope you like this uh, little look into Manga Soko. Great place to pick up your deals. Also, a great place to get ripped off if you're uh, not careful. Just before we go, quick look at the uh, PlayStation budget section there. You've got all those uh, Sega re-releases down there as well as the uh, D3 collections.
What's up, motherfucker? They met as adversaries. What the fuck was that for? A monster made them allies. <laughs> a secret agent. Immaculate. Intelligent. A rookie. They call him only G. His identity? A mystery. You ever gonna tell anyone what that fucking G stands for? No. A playboy cop. Isaac Washington. Make him mad, and he'll rip your balls off. I'm gonna rip your motherfucking balls off! Tonight, these unlikely allies will confront terror most foul in the blood so tall of Papa's Palace of Pain. Be a courteous guest. By tomorrow morning, I'll have my motherfucking revenge. Papa Caesar will be dead. If we don't stop this mutant outbreak, by tomorrow morning, we'll all be dead. Because your first visit will be your last. Papa's Palace of Pain. Rated X. Shit, man. I think I slept with that bitch. Is it a re-manifestation of Gozer? A PKE signature of Gozer's magnitude is definitely present, but the flux is weak for the moment. So it could actually be a revisitation. Pull it together, Ray. What do we have that can stop that cheap confection? Ray, weren't you going to finish up the install of the Super Slammer today? The Super Slammer? <laughs> Sounds untested. Tacky and exciting. I'm in. But will it work? This is great! Giant blobs of Stay Puffed! 
I bet they still have a paranormal or kinetic connection to Bubble Butt. I think we should proceed equipped with boson darts. I wanted to test these first, but since we're waving that safety step today, you should be aware that I modified the Neutrona Mod, which normally releases the particle stream. <laughs> Drones, they're advancing faster than we anticipated. You'll need to hurry. You neglected to mention the giant alien standing on the bridge. There. That wasn't so difficult. And cast your mind back. It's 1989. Cast your mind back to when you were a little kid. You're looking up at that arcade screen, you're twiggling around with the joysticks while the game's on demo mode, pretending you're playing it, pissing off everyone who actually does want to play it. And you think you're king of the world, don't you? Until someone comes along and says, Hey mate, you're only playing the demo, you know. Well, this is one of those games that'll bring back those memories. It's Golden Axe. Released in uh, May 1989. And how does it fare up to uh, this modern world of uh, 3D gaming? Well, to be fair, it still looks quite nice. But, um. As far as playability goes, it's a little bit on the sluggish side. Uh -huh. 
Now the main annoyance with Golden Axe these days is the actual uh, lack of fluency in the controls. You know, you can be uh, slashing away at someone and you just will not be hitting them. The collision section does seem to be a little bit off every now and then. And they're also, um, as I was saying, you'd be slashing away at the controls and the next thing you know, the enemy is bashing you back. Because uh, from the time you press the button to the actual move coming out on the screen, it does seem to have a bit of a delay. Of course, back in 1989, nobody noticed. It was like rock solid gameplay back then. So in between levels, these little buggers come along and steal your bloody magic potions, don't they? So you have to beat the crap out of them to get them back. Not to mention get some food out of that green one. And after doing that, you get a little uh, update on the story of the game. Unfortunately, Golden Axe only has four levels. Or five, maybe. No, it's four, isn't it? No, it's not. It's five. Five levels <laughs> it's got. And it's all over fairly quickly. Now the Mega Drive version was actually quite uh, similar to this arcade original. Unfortunately, it does miss all the speech. Not all speech, but an awful lot of speech, I should say. But mind you, I do remember the Mega Drive version sounding a little bit better. Now of course there are three different characters to choose from, being uh, the woman here, the axe battler guy and the little stubby dwarf. Pretty much the norm for back then. The guy being the strong one, the woman being the most nimble and the dwarf being a slow little fat ass bastard. And of course each character has their own abilities and strengths and weaknesses and their own magics. Oh well, there's me dead, isn't it? Now we all know the Mega Drive's got an awful lot of shooters for it, but which is the best one? Well, a lot of people may say uh, Thunder Force 4. Some may say Gainu. But a lot of the fans seem to think that this is the best one. This is Element Down. Now you may not have heard of it, and that's because it's quite a rare shooter for the Mega Drive. It certainly goes for quite a bit of money every time it appears on Yahoo auctions. As you can see, the graphics are quite nice, and they've all got a lovely, uh, big, beefy look to them. There's some nice little graphical touches in there as well, such as these rotating little uh, stars. And some of the bosses are quite nice as well. But the audio, what a bloody hell. An acquired taste, I do think. But how does it play? Well, quite interestingly, um, to change the speed, you've actually got to pause the game. Which is a bit of a twist, to be honest. But uh, the weapon system is quite nice. Um, use a, a select button to uh, change between the weapons. You've got your standard uh, front view weapon, uh, your back weapon, and you've got your uh, side weapons as well. Which actually do make a big difference to the gameplay, because if you don't select the correct weapon at the right time, you should ask goodbye, I think. Element Down is also one of those tricky shooters as well. Like a lot of the shooters on the Mega Drive are extremely easy to beat, even on the more difficult level settings, but uh, this one, even on the easy, is not that uh, easy. Ooh, some of the effects there, look at that.
Now, personally, I don't think Element Down's worth uh, the price which it goes for, you know. It does go for around about 14,000 yen on average in Japan, but I've seen it go for a lot more as well. So if you have something a little bit cheaper and still a bit elitist, you know, sort of game which you're not going to find every day down your local uh, Japanese game store, then why not try your hand at a bit of NCS Messiah blast in action? Nope, I don't mean Guy go Hellfire. I mean this. Yep, Glay Lancer. May not be as pretty as Element Down. But certainly got better sound, put it that way. And we got the good old Mega Drive robot speech in there as well. Power up system is a bit more conventional, but um, before you start the game, you do actually get to choose the behavior of your options. Stick to it and believe in your power. Wow, great speech. Okay, and like Element Down, uh, Glade Lancer is quite a tough shooter, especially on the harder level settings. And it does appear to be times when you can't actually see what's going on, you know, you'll be getting killed and you think, what the fuck just killed me then? But um, thankfully it doesn't happen all that too often, but it does happen. With the vast amount of levels in there, and some of the best, and I'm not joking, some of the best animation scenes you've ever seen on a cartridge game. It's definitely one of the uh, cheaper, at least, the shooters for the Mega Drive. A huge enemy stands in your way. <laughs> you gotta love that speech, haven't you? So pathetic, yet so great. Now since this game uh, actually did go onto uh, the Wii's download service, at least here in Japan anyway, uh, the price of the cartridge has dropped a little bit, so you'll be able to pick up a nice minty version of this for around about hmm, 7,000 yen maybe, which is quite a drop considering it was around 14,000 yen. Lovely stuff, as Alan Partridge would say.
Well, who would have thought it? Another Dreamcast game. Released in June 2009, this is Ducks. And from watching this first stage, you will notice that it pays quite a bit of homage to um, our type. Not only in stage design, but also in the way the weapons are used. So you get your little pod, which can be attached to the front of your ship to absorb bullets. You can also power it up, shoot it off separately to uh, attack the enemies. Or stick it on the area of your ship for some lovely back-end action. Ooh, yeah. As you can see, this game does look very pretty. I believe me and VJ, it does look extra special. Unfortunately, this uh, video captured just seem uh, does seem a little bit saturated. I think I must have the brightness setting too too high on the capture card for this one. As far as playability goes, it does play pretty much like our type. But in fact, you could uh, call it an unofficial remix of our type. Maybe. Unfortunately, the game does suffer from a score bug, which uh, some people on some forums, you know, the elitist wanking titted people, are giving the producers of this game a real hot time over it. Now, I actually can't get this bug to work, um, so it could be a problem running the game on a PAL machine. Or so I heard. Doesn't seem to affect me on a Japanese machine. But um, as I was saying, the uh, bug only affects the score, which basically gives you a full on score. For anyone who's playing for score and is playing with a power machine, it's going to be quite buggered. But uh, for the rest of us playing on NTSC machines, or so it seems the bug doesn't work on those machines, uh, we're going to have a great time because the game plays very, very well. Like I said, it's not uh, too difficult, but it's not walking the park either. So is Ducks worth picking up? Well, you know, I'm going to have to say yes. Well, the graphics could do with a little bit more animation in them. It's still a very, very solid uh, shooter, and um, it does have a very nice soundtrack as well, especially if you're into the Euro-style uh, shoot up soundtracks. Checkpoint. Checkpoint. But uh, maybe I'd hang off just a little bit before buying it to see if they get a bug fix release out there.
love with Nintendo Wii is getting all growing up. This is Juon. Based on a movie of the same name. I think it was called The Grunge or something like that in the States and uh, everywhere else in the world. With their westernized remake. But this is based on the Japanese original. And um, basically what we have is a survival horror of some sort. Now all you need is the Wii Remote to uh, control this game. No nunchuck required. To go forward you press the B button. To go back you pull down on the D-pad. Sounds a bit weird but it does work quite well. And um, to turn and uh, look where you want to look. You just point the Wii Remote at the screen. Now unfortunately uh, the Wii Remote controls are a bit unsensitive. So there are times when you'll be thinking, turn your little shit, and then, you know, you just won't turn, but uh, you sort of learn to live with that. Now, the game doesn't actually have a hero or a heroine as such. Um, basically, it's a lot of mini stories, and um, in this story, we are taking the role of a, a courier delivery guy. Look like delivered this parcel to what seems to be a rundown estate. There's also no way to survive the game either. You always end up dying. But the goal of the game is to get to the end. Now as you can see the visuals are extremely good. Some of the best uh, spooky looking visuals I've seen on the console. Got a few low res textures here and there but um, overall it's quite a nice experience. And the real time shadow effects really do add a lot of atmosphere to the game. And people who uh, can't speak Japanese will be very very happy to know that this game is extremely playable without any knowledge of the language. Now the only way you can die is if uh, you're caught by the uh, Juan woman or whatever she's called. Or if you run out of battery power for your light. So while you're searching through the area, you do have to uh, search for batteries or different torches. Because once that goes out, you can't see a bloody thing and you're dead. As you can see there's a little indicator in the bottom uh, left hand corner there. Which shows how much battery power I've got left and um, here's another battery. Shut up now. I'll let you watch this. So uh, turn up the volume. And better get a clean pair of underpants ready.